you're still with me here, we're going down that back road. It's going to take us out to the side of the swinging bridge and up to uh, a few places we live. Uh, uh, you know, I was cruising around this morning. Ended up back uh, in my hometown for a little bit here. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this on the fly. You know, and I know it's not shock and great stuff. But uh, I'll tell you what, man, I've thought of tons of stories. And we could probably do like just a whole series of videos here talking about this place. But I mean, really, if you want to hear that about anybody else who uh, uh, you can see we're following part of the river all the way down through here. Yeah, but these were the roads that we walked and talked. These are the uh, part of the shortcuts we used to take. We can climb these mountains up there. We spent time up in there. And uh, there's tons of other places, man. It seemed like we were always moving anywhere from a year to two or three years later. And uh, Used to be a house here, man. Gone. A lot of time, a lot of stuff's grown in. All right, back in 1977, when I was about four years old, uh, we got a trailer here on the corner of Bedford and Brown here in Richland, Virginia, and stuff. Right now, it's uh, what 35 years later. It's a empty lot. It's got a. Big brown fence there. It used to be a little chain link fence. It used to have some other trailers there. And right here's the back of a store. It looks like it's been burnt down and stuff. Uh, I'll tell you about that store in a minute. Uh, place has changed a whole lot, which you know is only natural. I remember being as a kid that this place was just huge. That brown house right there. I used to have a deck of cards that I'd walk around. I was sort of the neighborhood kid. You know, you could walk around and stuff. And I'd either be walking around or I'd be on my big wheel pulling a kite behind it and stuff. And I'd go on this uh, porch over here and make uh, a house of cards all the time. I'd always be some old man sitting there. We never spoke. These houses here and stuff like that weren't there. This is just a big field. And this is where all the neighborhood kids used to come out. And you'd find uh, lightning bugs at night and stuff. It was just awesome. I'd walk up here way to this house here see it past the car man there used to be some uh, teenage kids that lived there and we'd play lawn darts and stuff uh, like I said the place used to be huge over here but when I the uh, trailer was here and we lived in and stuff like that you know parents were young so they had a bunch of their friends over all the time and there's some party music playing and stuff and people would hang out sleep on the couch and stuff I'd get up early in the morning go through the couch and get change out and go into the bathroom where you know there's always a big pile of laundry and stuff I get a handful of change you know and uh, start, you know go out the house and walk at the store at four years old didn't have to tell anybody where you're going you know and just to give you an idea what I'm talking about here you know it'd be like that much money and sometimes you find a dime or a nickel or something and you walk on down here I'm just all excited come around the corner here and there used to be a big mural here man like a big RC sign and uh, you know this was the store it was like magic there used to be a big uh, pop machine here but it's the kind you put money in right here where this square is you put money in there and uh, you know open the door and you pull out a bottle and stuff but anyway I'd go in here to the store and stuff and uh, that handful of change wow it's been a long time get a handful of change and uh, I'd get a stack of kiss cards and uh, I'd you know eventually be like uh, kiss cards and trading cards and uh, you know wacky packs and uh, I think some Superman cards there towards the end and I'd get a big milk crate pull up against the uh, pinball machine grab me a knee high and some candy pile it all up on the pinball machine and uh, I'd sit there and play pinball watching the numbers roll and uh, I'd watch the bad news bear so I'd be sitting there you know hitting my hips on the uh, pinball machine no idea what it was supposed to do but I saw Kelly and the bad news bears do it right across the street this used to be the national market as you can see can't believe the thing's still selling and uh, I think it was a ceramic shop for a while and now it's like some kind of yard sale and shop and it's got apartments in the back this over here is a big big lots now 
but way back in the day and probably for over I don't know 80 years or something it was a brickyard and what you'd have is a whole bunch of domes and stuff uh, made out of brick and this is where they make bricks and put them in those domes to dry them I can't remember what they're called Right here, I'm going to show you like a landmark of uh, Richlands here, man. This is the King Cone, home of the greatest footlong hot dogs you've ever had, man. Especially if you're making a slaw dog. This place, you drive up, you get out of your car, you park, you order your food, they call your number out. I think this place has been here since probably about the, I don't know, early 60s, possibly late 50s, man. And they've always made, had their own little... Uh, um, recipe for chili and stuff. Um, this is this, this should be considered a landmark of this town of this been for so long. And the quality of food is just amazing. Everything's handmade. You can still get real ice cream, not that custard stuff. And uh, I'm not just saying this out of nostalgia or because you know I love the food here and stuff. I really didn't eat here that much. But by God, when I did, you know, I scarfed it up and. Uh, it, you know, if you ever end up in this part of town, man, this is the one place I would send people to get food. You can have, you know, more expensive restaurants, more exotic foods and stuff. But if you really want to taste something that's authentic and real, this is the place to go. So, you know, they got a free commercial out of me. Over here are the train tracks through town. I don't know how many times I've walked those getting around. Back then you had your bike or your walk. You walk through town, probably about two or three miles just to get to the mall. A couple ways to get to the mall. The mall's all gone now. It's got two three stores still kicking down here. Before I start that, you know, driving. This right here is where the corner cowboys used to hang out, man. It was not a pharmacy back then. Okay? The corner cowboys were a bunch of guys and basically that's where you bought your pot. There'd always be like four or five guys there. And that thing lasted at least three generations of corner cowboys through the 70s and stuff. That's where everybody would hang out. That's where everybody would walk to in this town to hang out and stuff. Down here is the pretty street of Richlands. I used to have an apartment above there above Vicky's Jewel Box. My first apartment on my own. And I gotta say, man, two, two three good years there. Uh, That street up there, I knew a little trail back where I'm taking here. Just look at all this stuff. I'll tell you about John a little bit up there. I don't know how much this is going to make it on there, man. Uh, a lot of memories are rushing back and getting. This was the bus stop. Yeah. And this 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 was my world from uh, '79 to about '82. First grade to kindergarten. That trailer there is still standing there. That's where I used to go on Sundays and watch uh, a bunch of movies, Tarzan and Godzilla in the 70s. Wow, this place has changed. We find a place to park and we'll be right back. Okay, right here, the reason I'm on top of this hill and this road is because I want you to picture a bunch of kids, man. You know, we were you know, from 7 to 10 years old. And we get our Tonka trucks, and we get these plastic trays, and we'd get right here, and we'd have a man on the lookout down there for cars and traffic, and we would just ride our Tonka trays and stuff, our Tonkas and our little trays, taking turns down this hill, man, making our own fun, flying down through there. At the bottom of the hill, where that car is, used to be uh, a set of uh, mailboxes, and man, I wiped out on them cut the back of my head I still got a scar that'll bleed to this day every now and then uh, that you know I will like I was proud you know I put a little uh, back then you know I put a little uh, handkerchief trying to look like some uh, I don't know Revolutionary War soldier carrying the American flag you know and come back and do it again this all has grown up this is actually on top of the hill I used to climb and this this there was no vegetation on this man this is where you see rabbits and snakes and stuff you had to be real careful back then oh man and I tell you what this, this trailer park man it was all mud back then all the green you're seeing and stuff and the big hill everybody used to climb I never climbed it man I was uh, forbade to climb it's probably the only thing I listened to back then when it come outside but like you would have wow place has really grown up okay right here where there's an empty lot is where I lived okay and uh, we moved the trailer from, you know, previous in the video down to here. 
That's about empty lots, man. Amazing. And it was a big mud hole back then. And there's so many people here and stuff, so many different people that, uh, you know, I want to say this was like, this was considered a rough part of town, but I was too young to really realize that. But things happened when you got here and hung out. Right down here and right here in this street and stuff, all the kids used to come out, man. It'd be anything from five-year-olds to 17-year-old kids, and we'd get our bikes and we'd make ramps, jump them. Everybody was looking out for traffic, and it was like the neighborhood kids, man. Everybody kind of looked out for each other even when they didn't get along. But, you know, God forbid, you know, some kids come from over the hill, you know, there's trails to come out there, man, you know, and let them mess with somebody. That was like my first sign of what loyalty was. And like, what I was getting ready to say is that like, this is the mix of people that was here, man. You'd have, you know, way back in the day when these were all different trailers, two trailers back, you had a guy, I won't mention his name, but, you know, found out he was a pedophile and he was sleeping with his sister that lived with him. I always thought those were just dirty, mean rumors. And then right here, where well, there's a trailer, it's different now. They'd have uh, a little girl who tried to set fire to the bus, and her mom brought a shotgun out, shot the side of her trailer trying to get to the water heater. But you go down here, and there used to be a trailer there that it was a real good friend of mine who had two beautiful sisters, and they were a good, you know, Christian family. And behind them, you know, you'd have uh, these two angels of girls who had a real nice home life. Down there, where that double wide is used to be two kids who were just spoiled punks and they're still in town one of them is anyway and uh, they'd hide behind their dad's harley davidson and throw mud balls at you daring you to you know hurt the bike because they'd call the law on you but i can go through here and i can show you all the places that all the fights went down because man back then you fought and it took me you know i was kind of a hard school the can we all just get along kind of kid and i took a few beatings and, you know, it was kids and stuff. I mean, it wasn't like real violent, horrible stuff, but, uh, you know, they'd lay a hurting on you. And then I got the big head after you got a few fights under your belt where, you know, you kind of took up for yourself and, you know, stuff like that. You got a little bit of the big head and there's always somebody bigger that would, uh, that would, uh, kind of, you know, put you back in your place and stuff and not let you go too far with it. A lot of life lessons and stuff, just a different time. This house here, right there behind those grown up trees and stuff, there's a little trail and it'll take you back to the park I just showed you, trail the park. This is where a guy named John lived and John was an older kid uh, and uh, I was probably about seven. I think he was like, I don't know, 16 to 17 or something like that. And I'd come around here and one day he was, this used to be his driveway there and uh, and uh, we ended up sitting there talking about uh, comics man he was just this cool kid he seemed to have his act together man and, and it might have been like my first form of hero worship or the first real role model I saw clean cut kid nice as can be uh, and, and he introduced me to uh, X-Men and Cyclops and stuff in a whole different way I've been lit reading Silver Age X-Men and stuff I didn't read any of the 70s stuff you know and um, you know we started we talking for like six months I'd come up here about twice a week and we just hang out in his driveway man and uh, and then one day I started coming around and uh, he wasn't there anymore and sister got back on the bus and the sister came up and told me that uh, you know he, he went to swim practice and died of a heart attack and I had this picture of Cyclops he had drawn which was just amazing I mean it was professional quality stuff and I offered it back to her and she just said John wanted me to have it or he wouldn't have gave it to me and she's there and just hugged me and stuff and cried on me and stuff that was some heavy stuff you know lost one of my somebody that I really looked up to at a real young age and uh, you know it's kind of sad to see you know I wonder how many people remember John because those are, uh, and I guarantee it's a lot more than you know than you think and to see this house still standing here and stuff just blows my mind so you know a lot to think about how can I get by without showing the high school and we all have our stories about high school <laughs> I'm one of the few people would not do it again you know but I want to record this way uh, just because we used to walk behind it is the middle school and we would walk home when I lived down here it's fifth and sixth grade uh, what that be 83 84 or something like that and there used to be a tree there in front of that church that actually had like a Keebler elf poster inside of it which I don't care how that happened and we'd walk all this home for fun not 
because we had to. You had to get a pass. We got tired of sneaking off and doing it. And uh, I'm going to take you to the place that, the house that I'm not going to get into because I'm not going to bone anybody out. But uh, it's, it's the one house I consider the house of horrors, man. That's the one place that it's, you know, the house isn't there anymore, but hopefully I'll be able to drive down the dead end road and not freak anybody out and show it to you. But uh, they, uh, when I heard they had burned the house down on purpose, you know, to get rid of it, to demolish and stuff, they actually burned it down. That's what I got told. First thing that got in my head was I wish I was the one that torched it. Um, it it's the one place that it's, it's almost 30 years later, and you know, it's the, the place where I still got to make peace with them. All right, guys, here's the house I lived in probably about my last three years of high school. And, uh, yeah, it's old, getting old on it and stuff like that. Lots of uh, better times, good times. Uh, a lot of tales to tell in that house also. Uh, walking distance from everything and uh, great neighbors. My best friend, who happened to be a girl, a few years older than me, lived right next door. Hung out there a whole lot. Uh, tons of funny stories to talk about this. Um... <laughs> a lot of stuff I could tell of myself on, but uh, a lot of good times and stuff like that. Um, there was one time I did a little, uh, <laughs> I, first of all, I drunk uh, something called Mad Dog, you know, with uh, two, three people and stuff like that. I walked home and uh, started raining and storming, and I uh, can't believe I'm telling this story. But uh, my mom got up and, you know, I was getting all paranoid, so I came over here and I was soaking wet with a mullet and stuff. and. I knocked on the door and what she said is that she heard knock knock slump I fell into the door and she took me back in her room her dad was on the couch mister he was he's an awesome guy uh, but they still live there too awesome man but anyway she took me to her bedroom and you know I passed out in there and when I woke up uh, she called one of her friends over and they'd uh, teased my hair put makeup on me and put me in a bikini so good times so back again. Uh, it's kind of cracked me up to see a page. This was all woods, of course. Over there is an airport. You just watch the planes. Slow down. Now this building here, this was one of the final places that was built that made me want to go ahead and just leave and move. Looks like it's really used as garage now, but you notice there's no windows on it. And up this road, this is one of the last places. There's a trailer up there as you follow the trail that that's one of the last places in Richlands I lived and uh, that garage back there was built and you know I'd be down here walking and have two three of my friends with me or something and these guys would come out and they were like you know just full of themselves money and drunk and acting like we never saw a $20 bill before and offers $20 to tell them somebody snooping around and what it turned out about two months later the guy was busted they're growing a hydroponic pot in there where you just use water and lights. That's why there's no windows. Before this was a trailer park, this was nothing but woods also, and there was a cave back there. That's probably about 15 feet back, but it seemed huge to us. And we walked down here. Of course, all these trailers were just starting to come in. But we walked down here and uh, in the winter, and we you know, burn wood, burn trash we found, and just hang out there in the winter, and uh, just had a good time, man four or five of us just hang out we come up here and play football we're coming up on two sets of apartments but they're one's hunter's ridge yeah good times down there you know and this is this is where we you know hung out probably like from 85 to 87 85 86 you know i'd walk up this road we come up to another set of apartments called Oxford squares uh nicknamed sin city all these houses and trailers weren't there back then that was just a wide spot up this road. They've actually got signs and it looks like people are living up there. But that was just a place to go park and hang out. Oh, and these, these apartments look completely different from when I was little. Wow, they put side on them. They were all brick. We'll go through here. I lived in apartment 31. Probably see my dirty window where I've been driving forever. Yeah, they've redone this place. But uh, I lived here for a while. Back then, kids everywhere, man. Football games, riding their bikes everywhere, walking, hanging out in the woods. Uh, here's some of the trash bins. They've redone them. Right, look at this. Somebody out there is freaking out. All these trees were tiny when I was here. They just planted them. 
but in that top left corner apartment 31 that's where I lived yeah we got a better swing set now people cruise through here you never knew who was moving in got some traffic going on oh they can have pets now somebody's on here in the porch with the dog didn't have that when I lived here and right here is the laundry mat now what's amazing about the laundromat, of course it's not there anymore, is that that was the payphone, man. And you lived and breathed by that payphone to call people and your friends, and there's always a line. That's how you met a lot of people. And back then, wrestling was real big. Oh man, there's a girl in that bottom uh, left-hand apartment that lived right there. When I was about 12, I uh, got crisis on Infinite Earths number 11, the comic book, and we went on Halloween. Had no idea she had a crush on me. And I feel bad to this day because I ignored her. My mom even tried to give me a heads up, but my mind, you know, I was still a kid. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's where we'd walk from the mall to the swinging bridge. And uh, all this was woods back then, man. All kinds of little shortcuts in the town. We're about to go back past this garage down here. Behind the garage is a patch of woods, and of course, we knew a trail or where I lived at and stuff. And we thought we were Scooby-Doo in the game there for a little bit because we got back there and we were hiding because we saw a bunch of people back down behind this creek behind these trailers here. Oh man, I can't believe I'm filming all this. It's take forever to load. But anyway, back there we saw a bunch of these people and they were odd looking people in those woods way back there, man. They were odd people, man. And they were digging a grave. We saw it. We came back and they dropped something in it, man. It, was, it looked like a small kid, you know, in a, in a blanket. We're like, oh my God. And, you know, I'm ready to call the police and, you know, two other guys with me. I mean, we weren't, I don't know how to explain. We were, we were kind of excited and freaked out at the same time. And then, like, reality hit. This could be real. So before we called the police, we saw we needed to dig it up and make sure what it was. Yeah, I mean, it sounds messed up now, but at the time it made perfect sense. And so we got out there and we started digging, man. And we were freaking out, man. We were taking turns looking out to make sure those people weren't coming by, digging like you would not believe. And uh, we were like grabbing big rocks and pieces of bark, anything we could find. And we finally found it. And then like we touched it and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. It, it felt like, you know, a body. You know, it felt like flesh, you know. And then we freaked it up as a dead dog. <laughs> I mean, and we were like, oh no. We freaked out and started running, man. Just let the thing half buried. I mean, we were scared to death, man. All right, here we go. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, here we go. This was the neighborhood. There's the bus stop. We'll go down this road. Hopefully, I won't freak anybody out. Uh, easy to do down here. Yeah, this used to be all gravel road. Oh, apologize for the shaky camera here. Yep, yeah. it's all coming back. Oh, these people got. Right, they posted it. Yeah, they turned it off. Hang on, I'm gonna get off here and I'll see you guys.